Kelly! Kelly, come on. I know you're in there. Come on, Kelly. Open up. Let me in, please. Oh, it's you. So why would you come and see me if I don't exist? Oh, come on, Kelly, give me a break. I, it's not my fault that Drew is moving into the carriage house. Kevin is the one that invited him. Yes, but you let that happen without even asking me. You assumed that I'd go along with that. Like three men and a babe. Oh, you just let me explain. No, I this. knew that this was going to happen the minute we left Paris. Look, that was magic, and this is reality. In the real world, a love like ours cannot last. What happened, David? I heard you had your cell done over with all the latest and the best. Aunt Gannon had it all removed. What a pity. Yeah, the one thing that I took from our marriage was a taste for the good life. Now I'm doomed to hunger for it forever. What if I said I could satisfy that appetite? Is that the jingle jangle of money that I hear? That's just your way of saying April Fools. I know that gleam in your eye. What are you up to now? Uh, it's strictly business, Mr. Thornhart. I've sent my star reporter to Galveston, Texas to cover the biggest story of the year. Now, that's Bo's family. How come I didn't hear about that? Well, maybe because you're reading that old, tired rag, the banner. You know, if you're going to stay in this town and be on top of everything, you're going to have to subscribe to the sun. Of course, that is, if you are staying in town. No, I'll be here. Really? I've accepted a position as a teacher with the university's English department. But I've got to tell you, I don't appreciate the way that you glorify the Buchanan's trouble. Believe me, this is no time to panic, Herr Guthmann. Uh, yes, we did have a tanker run aground off the coast of France, but that situation is well in hand. Yes. Fire? Well, how, how do you know? No, no, no. My grandfather has personally flown to Galveston. He's taking care of that situation himself. Yeah, do me a favor, though. Um, keep this under wraps. I, I wouldn't tell anybody about that at this time. Uh, Dunker Show. More bad news. I thought all we were leaking was oil here, Tina. If anybody else finds out about this fire at the oil refinery, Buchanan Enterprises stock is not going to be worth the paper it's printed on. Okay. Somebody, please tell me what is going on here. Why did Grandpa run out of his own wedding? This is my wedding night. I know. That's why I'm here, to kiss the bride. Asa's bride, not yours. Get out! Oh, Asa, 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 Asa. The honeymoon's gonna have to be postponed until things calm down in Galveston, if they ever do. I knew it. You started the fire at Asa's oil refinery, and that tanker that ran aground, that was because of you, too, wasn't it? Oh, Carlo, you're behind the whole thing, aren't you? I have decided not to testify against you. <laughs> Hank Gannon's going to be furious, of course, but the district attorney is no fool. He's not going to go to trial without his two star witnesses. I've also decided to have the yacht repaired that you almost destroyed. Oh, come on. Kelly's the one that set that thing on fire. Trying to save herself from you. <sighs> but do let me finish. This will be of interest. I've also decided to give you a very generous little parting gift. Oh, okay, I see. So, uh, what's the catch? Oh, you 
you need to do is um, plead guilty to the lesser charges, accept a suspended sentence, and leave town forever. Oh, David, it's a deal made in heaven. Or the other place. Hmm. You know, Dorian, when you set off on your little world cruise, you were all set to see me go to Statesville. Now you come back, you look all rested, you offer me this deal that's too good to be true, so what's the catch? I won't deny that I have wanted to see you suffer, brought to your knees, humiliated. You blackmailed me with that horrid diary and you tried to bleed me dry, but hey, <laughs> well, that's all in the past, isn't it? All that concerns me now is the future. Dorian, all that concerns you is you. How little you know me. If you were brought to trial for having kidnapped Kelly, it would bring to light certain tangled relationships that just might sully the Kramer name. Oh, you mean like when Kelly tried to kill me with a lamp and bury me in the woods. You mean her desperate attempt at self-defense. A jury can interpret things in many, many different ways. However, in the court of public opinion, everybody loses, especially a young, innocent girl like Kelly. I want her to have a brilliant, brilliant future without the taint of scandal. Oh, gee, guard, do you think I could get a hanky over here? Joey dumps you for Kelly, and now you want to protect her. Come on, Dorian, get real. What, do I have to get down on my knees? I'm gonna jump into another fountain? Kelly, I love you. I love you as much as I did in Paris, more than I did in Paris. In Paris, Joey, you did not order a, a, a pan au chocolat without asking me. We come home and all of a sudden, Drew is invited to live into the carriage house without me knowing about that? I mean, if you think I am going to cook and clean for three no, guys... No, 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 God, I... no, God, no. I don't want you anywhere near the kitchen. What I mean to say is, is that, um, Kelly, the, the, the carriage house belongs to the family, and Kevin has just as much share to it as, as the rest of us. So if Kevin is going to invite our cousin, Drew, to live with us, who am I to say no? Forgetting the kitchen for now. Let's talk bathroom. Don't you think it's going to be a little crowded when we brush our teeth in the morning? Kelly, there are three bathrooms. There are four bedrooms. There's plenty of room. What is the problem? I, I thought you and Drew got along. We do. That is not the point. I like Drew. He's been very sweet to me ever since he came to town. So... Your brother is very nice. Okay. Then what's the problem? Kelly. Come on, what's wrong? Grandpa Asa races out of here on his wedding night, leaves Alex all alone, and you're both telling me there's no story. Oh. Okay. Forget I'm a reporter. I'm family cord, and if Grandpa Asa's in trouble, I want to help. Nice try, Kev. But I don't have anything to say, on or off the record. Tina. Oh, don't, don't look at me. I, this is Buchanan family business. Yes, and I'm a Buchanan. Look, if something's going down, something bad, and somebody else gets a hold of the story, somebody who maybe doesn't care who they hurt... Well, he's got a point there. Tina, please. You see? There is something going on here. Come on, Cord. When Blair gets a hold of this story, she's going to exploit it. Now, is that what you two want? No. No, of Tina, course please, not. You, can stay well, you know Blair, right? when she gets a hold Tina, of Tina, enough. Thank you. Please. Look, I'm going to find out sooner or later. So just tell me, and I'll fix everything for everybody. Kevin, you want to help the family? Why don't you wait until we have a statement for the press? I understand. You're CEO of Buchanan Enterprises. You got a job to do. But I work for the Banner, which is also part of our family. And I got a job to do, too. Talk 
about a run of bad luck. First Asa loses the tanker, and now his main refinery in Texas. Oh, I don't believe in bad luck when it comes to you, Carlo. <laughs> After your failed attempt at trying to destroy Asa at the Palace Hotel with that bombing, you've just decided to go after his business. It makes perfect sense to me. Alex, I don't have to destroy Asa. Your husband's greed and hubris precipitated this tragic chain of events. And there's nothing that I or anyone else can do. It's too late to put the brakes on, so to speak. No. Carlo, clearly you can do whatever you want. So what you will do is you will correct this situation immediately. Or I will call Asa and tell him that you are behind the entire sabotage. Please, go right ahead. You think I'm bluffing? Alex, call! I can't get through. expect a human dust bunny like you to understand my love of family. So why don't I just talk in the one language I know you do understand. Money. Oh, I'm fluent in that one. Money. Give me an M-O-N-E-Y. What do you got? When you're Money. quite finished, can we just close this deal, David, so I can go home and take a nice hot bath and start forgetting about you? You're really serious about this, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Does this Look serious enough? That's a respectable starting point. Now let's negotiate. Sorry, this is a one-time only offer. Take it or leave it. No, 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 Dorian. You're the one that taught me that everything's negotiable. And I wouldn't dream of leaving town without taking at least a million of your dollars and putting them in my pocket. <laughs> I'll dream all you want. What you're gonna get is this. All right. I'm a reasonable man. A half a million dollars will get me started someplace else. Oh. Gee, it's getting late. I think I will let Hank Gannon prosecute after all. No, wait, just... Whatever happened to negotiating in good faith? A hundred thousand dollars and not a penny less. Fifty thousand dollars, just like it says right here, David. Oh, okay, really, you're killing me here. I'll throw in, um... All your credit card charges, your cellular phone fees, and oh, let's not forget the bribes you had to pay for all the prison perks. I'll need wheels. I'll buy you a tricycle. Do we have a deal? What do you say, I stop by for just one last toodaloo? <laughs> you don't quit, do you? Oh, come on, Dorian. That's what you like about me. I'm simply printing the facts. Hmm. Seems a tad sensational to me. Oh, well, I tell you what. Mr. Professor of English, why don't you tell me what I'm doing wrong? I mean, that is, grammatically speaking. I'm teaching a course in Western literature, Mrs. Manning, not, not English composition. Oh. Besides, I don't think you need my help. You've got a wonderful way with words. Are you making fun of me, Professor? Making fun mm -hmm. of you? Oh, no, please. 
One of the most exciting things about living in land use is getting a chance to read your wonderful paper. Oh, what a coincidence, because one of the most exciting things about you being in Landview is that I can count on you as a reader. Really? Yeah. Mm. Uh -huh. Will you still think that when I start sending letters to the editor? I can handle that. I am especially looking forward to the one that exposes Poseidon, although, Will, your... What is it, your detective ship? Be taking a backseat to your scholarship from now on? <clears throat> I intend to do both, Mrs. Manning. And I've already told you who Poseidon is. If no, you would just listen. You are wrong. It is not Carlo Hesser, and I can prove it. We do not belong together. Now I want you out of my house and out of my life for good. I don't think so, Alex. You must stop dreaming like this, Carlo, please. That's the difference between us, Alex. I make dreams come true. Those dark, disturbing dreams that lurk in your subconscious. The ones you're afraid to bring to the surface. I... dive down. Hey, what's this, a diamond in the rough? Uh, that, that, what, put that down. What, what is it, right? Just Asa it has down. rocks? It's a rock. Why? It's, it's what, a what, piece what? of shale. Put it down. <laughs> it's from Asa's first oil well, and, and he's had it since he was 20 years old, and you could just, just, just give it to me. <laughs> give it to me. <laughs> I think uh, Asa should be uh, changing his lucky charm. <laughs> I'm going to go and get changed, and when I come back, I do not want to see you here. All right, my love. For now. Good luck has always followed you, he said, for all these years, hasn't it? Now let's see where it goes. If we had never gone to Paris, if we had never gotten close, then I'd be telling myself how lucky I was. I'd be saying, you know, how many girls get to move into a house with three gorgeous guys? Yeah, the only thing these gorgeous guys are going to be sharing are the chores. They're not going to be sharing anything else. Joe, that is exactly my point. Okay, I, I don't need the roommates. And it doesn't matter to me how nice or nice looking they are. When I was in Paris, I discovered something way more important than a roommate. That fancy boutique on the corner? Stop. I mean you. Those long walks along the Pont Neuf, the endless nights at Du Marco, the park bench at Luxembourg Garden. I, I made a wish. I made a wish. I made a wish that every day when we got back, it would be as romantic and as private as those days we had in Paris. I want that too. But uh, Paris was just the beginning. We don't want every day to be like that, do we? Yes, Joey, yes we do. Why not? Now that we're back in Landview, we have a chance to let this relationship just ripen and, and mature naturally. <sighs> You're making it sound like we're cheese. Look, if you do not want to be with No, me... that's not it. I do want to be with you. Someday we'll even get a place of our own. But. In the meantime, I, maybe it's a good idea that there are people with us to act, act as buffers. Buffers? First we're cheese, now we're aspirin? No. You see, this is what I mean. I, I try to say something constructive, and, and you take offense. And Until we learn to read each other's signals and, and, and stop getting on each other's nerves. Oh, we're on each other's nerves now. No. It's just the opposite, Kelly. I get on your nerves. You do not my rules about cleanliness. Oh, come on, Kelly, think of it this way. You can have your own room. You can hang your bras on the air conditioning vent. You, you can hang your stockings o over the, the track lighting, for all I care. In Paris, I was your mon chari. 
A lamb, you, I'm your slob. Well, you can be machete slobby. Toujours. Come on, smile, laugh. Come, it'll be fun. And if it isn't, we'll make other arrangements. But just say you'll give it a try and move in. Please. Please. There's no need to listen to rumors, Monsieur Duval. Yeah, my, my grandfather is taking care of all that. Right. Au revoir. Oh, who says Europe isn't united? They all want a piece of Asa's scalp. Any luck? No, all I get is static. Oh, man, Asa had better get in touch with us soon, otherwise we're gonna lose every single one of our European investors, not to mention the mutual... Ow. Are you okay? Yeah, hey, family business has fallen apart. What's a vital limb, more or less? This was all my fault. Had we not started making love... And you falling off the couch, this Tina, wouldn't have happened. Tina. Come on, making love to you has been the nicest thing that's happened to me in a long time. Sprain or no sprain. <laughs> Roberts. Hmm. Will. Yeah, what is going on down there? The call. Yeah, uh, oh. give me a damage report. What do you yes, got? Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, no. No, no, that's right, not uh, true. I, I want you to contact the families of the Well, I don't care what you've heard. I can assure yeah, you that too. Buchanan Enterprises is stronger than ever. You tell them Buchanan Enterprises yes. will be there for them. Well, A.C. Buchanan is on right, his look, way. And you find out what right caused now. that fire, you understand yes, me? Yes, to Galveston, and he's taking charge as of the situation. As soon as A.C. gets there, have him give me a call. Bye. So, yes, let, let me ask you something, sir. Have you ever lost money in Buchanan stock? Well, then I suggest to you, don't sell. Thank you, goodbye. <clears throat> Thank you, Tina. If A.C. were here right now, I... I'm not doing it for A.C. Carlo denied being Poseidon. I did a little investigation of my own. And? And I spoke personally to a Lord Magwitch who swore that Carlo was with him in London the night the attempted bombing was at the Palace Hotel. Come on, Blair. A man like Carlo Hesse, with all his muscle and all his money, can buy any alibi he wants, even from a man like Lord Magwitch. Which is why I had my investigative staff double-check the police here in Landview, London, and Dublin, and nothing links Carlo to your Inspector Bass or the men of 21, all right? I know what I heard in that bloody empty TV studio. And Poseidon's what voice is the same as Colonel Hesser. What it's a raspy voice over a pair of headphones. Okay, maybe his voice sounds... I know what I heard. And it's him. Do you think that I don't want to know who Poseidon is? He is the man responsible for killing my husband. And I want him to suffer just like Todd did. But we have got to get some real evidence here, Patrick. Oh. Real evidence. Well, maybe then I should go out and get some real evidence. I need to find real proof that he... Good evening, Mr. Thornhart. Blair. Hello, Carlo. What are you doing here? New member. I just joined the club. Uh, may I buy you both a uh, drink? Uh, um, no, thank you. Actually, Patrick and I were discussing, um, Western literature, weren't we? Fascinating. Mm -hmm. Enjoy. One second, Mr. Hesser. May I see your ring? I will go bring my rental car up the driveway, and you can pack a few basics, and we'll start to move you in. Uh, but didn't you say you didn't want to rush things? Let me put it to you this way. Where would you rather spend the night tonight? With the Reverend and Mrs. Dweeb, or with me? Keep the car running. I won't be long. I'll take that as a wee. A wee, 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 wee. Mm -hmm. Rossi, I've got the... Oh, Dorian. Hello, sweetheart. 
Joe? Hello, Dorian. Got to stop meeting like this. Patsy isn't here, I'm afraid. That she's on some assignment for the paper. Oh, that's my daughter. Work, work, work. But just as well, because this gives me a chance to tell you in person. Uh, what? Tell me what? David has agreed to plead guilty to the lesser charges and leave town immediately. What? <laughs> that means, my sweetheart, that there will be no trial. <laughs> oh, Andrea, thank you. Oh, me? Oh, my goodness. I didn't have anything to do with it. I'm sure you didn't. I, I don't understand. I mean, he was supposed to drag me through the mud, all kinds of accusations. Mm. What turned him around? Who cares? The past is where it belongs, in the past. Oh, I, this is too good to be true. I think I have got the fairy godmother looking out for me. Yeah, you do. Something like that. Dorian, I would like to tell you something. Um, that... uh, I, I'd like to tell you. Joey and I are going to move in together. Are you? Well, isn't that wonderful? And not that it's a surprise. Paris can have that effect. <laughs> in fact, a, a world cruise can also uh, change a person. And I haven't had a chance to tell you, Dorian wrote a book while she was away. Well, she did, did she? What's wrong? You don't think I have a book in me? No, not at all. I just... What kind of book? That's the question. Is this the uh, tell-all memoirs you were going to write about my family? Tina, I can't hold off all these investors forever. Look, it's a panic. And if you just write this out, then they'll all calm down. They can't all sell their share in the company, can they? Oh, perfect. Oh, this is great. I, I don't know what's worse. Panicking phone calls or no phone calls at all. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> no, no, you don't. Yeah, I know. You probably think it's your fault. Asa made you CEO, and, and now things are just going wrong. Well, this all did happen on my watch, Tina. But it's not your fault. Look, yeah, there's, there is a dark cloud hanging over Buchanan Enterprises. What did you say? I said it's not your fault. No, 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 about a dark cloud. You know, since Carlo Hester has been back, Ace's luck has gone from bad to worse, hasn't it? Yeah. I mean, for someone who tries to bomb the Palace Hotel while Ace is there, uh, then our tanker mysteriously runs aground offshore of France, and now this refinery fire. I'm sorry, that's just one too many coincidences for me. Uh... Roberts. Will, what is going on? Yeah, uh, what did your preliminary damage report say? Whatever it is, man, you better tell me it's not an accident. I'm sorry, uh, what was that? Is this the picture of the one you think's Poseidon? Yeah. It's on the ring. I don't know, lab guys think it's a flower. The ring. May I see it? I collect antiques, you see, of all kinds. Unless, of course, you don't want us to see no, it. No, 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 no. Don't be silly, of course. <laughs> I'm flattered. Please forgive my possessiveness. It was a gift from a good friend who is now deceased. Now, if you want something similar to this, I know this very, very gifted yeah, thanks. young engraver. I'll keep that in mind. Enjoy the evening. Carla. Now, what was that all about? There's a picture that Kevin took in Dublin, and we think it was of Poseidon. Now, he was covering his face with his hand, but on his hand there was a ring. The CIA thinks that there was some kind of flower on it. It's red on top and green at the bottom. Right. Just like Kessler's ring right now, with a rose on it. Oh, excuse me, but I don't think that was a rose. I do believe I saw a C and an H. Those were his. Yes. Before he turned around, he must have pulled a switch on oh, us. Oh, God, you are obviously obsessing about Carlo being Poseidon. Now, why don't you go and try to find the real Poseidon? I found the real Poseidon. He's sitting right over there. Well, I tell you what. If you need to... 
fixate on someone. Why don't you try me? I beg your pardon? Well, since you're starting your new life here in Landview, you obviously need to, to get down to the basics, you know. Like a life, maybe a smile, relaxing, having a good time, enjoying yourself. I don't know if I still remember how to do that. Well, I'll tell you what, it's kind of like riding a bicycle. How about if I buy you a drink and see how quickly it comes back to you, okay? All right. <laughs> the good reverend can just put this on my tab. You need a drink to tell me about your memoirs? I tried to write my memoirs. I sat there on the deck of the cruise ship, my laptop on my knees, and I was determined to spill my guts to expose every nasty thing that was ever done to me, and vice versa. But... <sighs> it's your fault, Joe. My fault. Your voice kept coming to me, urging me to let go of my anger and my petty need for revenge. You see, even in the middle of the ocean, your good opinion is important to me. So, tell him what you wrote. He'll laugh. Try me. A novel. Oh, he didn't laugh. Uh, no, uh, of course not. No, a novel, that's great. Uh, I can see the movie now. Clint Eastwood, Meryl Streep. Oh, 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 please, sweetheart. <laughs> My publisher hasn't even seen it yet. It was enough just to write it. It was cathartic and liberating, healing. All those pent-up feelings came out of me in a, a, in a creative way. And, well, that was a new experience for me. I, I can't believe this. Well, what's it about? Are, am I going to have to wait for the movie? It's a love story, a romantic triangle. And does it have a happy ending? What? What did they say? It was sabotage, right? I mean, somebody did this deliberately. The didn't federal they? investigators are moving in. Will says that the preliminary report shows that it was an accident. Oh, that can't be. You know, I, I was the one who ordered that upgrade on the safety precautions, Tina. I was in charge. I went down there personally to Galveston to make sure that everything was installed correctly. I, I was there. The buck stops right here, Tina. No, no, you can't blame yourself for this at all. Tina, I was in charge. Will says that the safety precautions malfunctioned. He said that none of the rescue equipment was in place properly. This whole thing, it was just a recipe for disaster. I'm sorry, I don't buy this. There has to be another explanation. Two of our men were seriously hurt. And now a couple of firemen, too. Oh, oh, God. This doesn't make any sense to me. I was there, I checked it out. That safety equipment, it all worked properly. The alarm should have gone off. That fire should have been contained before it caused any kind of damage. What is going on here, Tina? What could have gone so wrong? Mr. Thornhart. Not good, Mr. Thornhart. Not good at all. <laughs> Where? <gasps> Excuse me, Patrick. Was hoping you could help me. Well, Kevin, what is the matter? <sighs> this guy called over to the banner this evening looking for Cassie Carpenter. I guess he hadn't heard that she'd gone over to the sun yet. Anyway, he wouldn't talk to me or leave anything except a phone number. But from what I felt, he was sitting on some pretty heavy information. Oh, really? And I guess that you want me to pass this tidbit of information on to Cassie, who now works for me? Blair, we may be competitors, but Cassie is like family to me. Look, Kevin, I don't know where Cassie is, okay? I'm, I'm sorry. I thought you'd said she'd gone to Texas. Thanks, Irish. I owe you one. Kevin? Why did you do No, that? me first. 
Why didn't you want him to know of Cassie's whereabouts? It's just a little newspaper rivalry, that's all. It, look, it doesn't really matter now, does it? Because Cassie's already there on the story, and there's no way the banner can catch up to the sun on this one. <laughs> Hi, this is the Reverend Andrew Carpenter. My wife Cassie is on her way to Texas, but I've seen to have misplaced the number where I can reach her. It's uh, quite urgent. Did she leave it there at the office? Thanks, that would be great. What? 409. What city is that the area code for? Galveston, of course. Thank you. Bless you, my son. Joanne? Yeah, Kevin. I need you to drop what you're doing, get on the phone, and call the airlines. Book me the first seat available to Galveston. The ending isn't happy or sad. I guess you could call it bittersweet. Well, I cannot wait to read it. Yes, neither can I. And perhaps you'll be good enough to autograph a copy for me. <laughs> I would be happy to. <laughs> I better be moving on. Oh, Kelly, would you please uh, give Cassie a message for me? Oh, <laughs> silly me. <laughs> of course, uh, you won't be here, will you? <laughs> By the way, good luck on your new living arrangements. Thank you. Thanks. Good night. Good night, Joanne. Bye-bye. You know, um, she seemed a little upset. Maybe I should just go check. Joanne, she, was... she is very strong. Yeah, I know, but she also puts up a really good front. <sighs> I know her. If you can read her signs, too, I mean... Your niece, if you have any kind of sensitivity to your aunt, you know what that you mean she's... if... What, I have no sensitivity now? No, I, I'm... What I'm... I, not, I'm not... You can only deal with sensitive people like Kevin and Drew. Does that answer your question? Come on, you can't help anything staying chained to this desk. Why don't we go get something to eat, okay? Tina, please, Just no, please. Well, you're I, not I taking. Can't think of anything. You're not taking care of yourself. Somebody here. Oh, listen, you're gonna have to do something. I can't get through to Ava. Join the club, Alex. Well, we might have some kind of interference. It didn't stop us from receiving the bad news from Texas. So has there been any more news? Has anybody died? Two of our men were seriously hurt. Now two firemen are hurt as well. Oh my God. The most unbearable thing about all this is that it seems to be our fault. The experts are saying that the whole fire started because of faulty safety measures. Uh, no, don't, don't, don't believe that. I'm, I'm positive that's not the case. See, that's what I said. Whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute, Tina. Alex, how can you be so sure about this? What do you know? Nothing, Cordero. Just that this is all a bad dream, and I wish we could wake up from it. And I know that one more blow, and Ace's heart can't take it. R.J., will you please relax? Everything is under control. Uh, but this uh, Irish poet, Thornhart, he recognized my ring. And no, I'm sure I convinced him he was mistaken. If he persists, uh, then we'll uh, have to do something about that. Well, I guess that one drink didn't cheer you up. So... How about dinner? Uh, thank you. I've got my first day of classes tomorrow. Oh, right. Well, I guess we can't disappoint those pretty co-eds, now can we? Good luck, Professor. Thanks for the drink. And I'll take a rain check for dinner, okay? Well, I'm counting on that. Great. Good night. Good night. Well, well. You may be teaching English, but I did feel some chemistry just now when you touched my hand. It's too bad Marty wasn't here to see it. 
Well, I guess I'm just gonna have to work on that. 